All right, sweet November. Sweet November is finally here. Sweet November is finally back. It is November 1st. That is Iowa November. That is exactly what you asked me right there. Sweet November is also being a tree. Chasing those everywhere. Oh, sweet November, baby. Oh, well, baby. <laughs> no place like the sun. That's the dude I wanted to kill. Let's go. You did it, dude. Oh my gosh. I could, he's literally, he's 18 yards from us the whole time. That is a dream. That is a dream. Do you see that? <laughs> <laughs> Just, it's just, oh. I don't even know what to say. It's, you can't make this up. Chasing November season six begins now. The 2019 season was nothing short of a banner year for the Midwest Whitetail team. However, like all good things, it eventually came to an end and the memories made were added to the archives to be revisited again someday. Jared Mills' 2019 season can be described in a fairly simple manner, a real life roller coaster. If you remember, he came close multiple times to tagging a world-class monarch, but wasn't able to seal the deal, and eventually the neighbor ended this story tagging the buck in mid-November. Down but not out, this turned Jared's attention to another worthy foe, a beautiful tall tine 10 pointer with kicker points off the G2s. Similar to the buck he was pursuing all season, this giant also lived on a property that proved to be challenging for any bow hunter. Very few huntable trees, lots of open fields, and large sections of warm season grasses led to multiple encounters, but no punch tag. Winter turned to spring, and routine CRP maintenance left behind a charred pair of antlers, an impressive set that turned out to be the Big Tens, a hopeful sign that the buck survived the winter months. Jared spent the majority of his spring and summer working hard to improve his odds for the 2020 campaign. Out of character, he pre-hung multiple stand locations due to the fact that his options are limited thanks to the lack of trees. Next, he sculpted a new brassica plot tucked right next to what Jared presumes to be one of the buck's favorite fall bedding areas. Finally, he places a redneck hay bale blind giving him another option should he need it. With the trap set, Jared deploys his cuttyback cameras across the property, and by the end of summer, the giant buck returns and so continues the story for the Big Ten. Speaking of incredible seasons, Mike Reed is coming off of his best ever. He crossed the 2019 finish line with an impressive stat sheet, filling two bow tags on two incredible bucks. First was the massive brute known as Todd Gurley, who took his last stroll on the crisp late October evening. The second buck? Well, that saga needs no introduction. The prodigy buck was Mike's biggest ever, and a wild ride that found Mike swimming across a river to retrieve the animal resulted in one of our most memorable hunts in Midwest Whitetail history. Looking ahead, Mike can only hope that the upcoming season is half as exciting as 2019 was. Lucky for him, the cards are stacked in his favor, and his main focus turns to the new home farm to kick off the 2020 ride. After leaving the farm alone basically all of the 2019 season, he hoped to find back a laundry list of impressive bucks who called the piece home. Wasting no time, Mike spent his spring and summer constructing multiple microplots, mowing new access trails, and meticulously examining the map to create the perfect ambush points. After deploying his cuttyback cameras, nearly every buck from the 2019 season returns, and atop the pack are three giants. Leading off is the impressive nine-pointer that Mike filmed multiple times during the late season. Despite losing a point, the buck now known as Tex because of his giant wide frame, jumps to the top spot for his wife Catherine. Second and equally impressive is Ali, a buck who Mike's daughter Bella found the shed off during the spring months. Blossoming into a mainframe nine-pointer sporting a giant drop time, it's clear why Mike has his sights set on this great buck. Last but not least on this list is a great frame ten-pointer with kickers off the right G2 that blew from the past season. The property's close proximity to Mike's work, coupled with the impressive lineup, ensure that the home farm will be one of Mike's main focuses. Also on the list of Mike's off-season projects was learning the new piece of river property that he purchased in the spring of 2020. Bordering his and Jared's river farm, excitement is high to find back both familiar and new faces. He's able to hang multiple stand locations and attempt to plant food, but between the summer's drought and intense deer pressure, very little grows. Not to be forgotten, the original river farm holds lots of promise too. 
Multiple good bucks from the 2019 season reappear on camera, including the Black Eyed 10, the 6x5 buck, and a great up and comer known as the Crab Claw 10, a buck the guys found a match set to during the shed season. Last but not least, a single cuttyback photo shows that a legend has returned, the ghost named Marino. The same buck that seemingly has nine lives, somehow escaping untouched despite multiple close proximity encounters during 2019. This is the first time he's ever been captured during the summer, and hopes are high that the chase will pick up right where it left off in the coming months. The only buck that's missing is the big broken four-year-old that Jared and Mike encountered multiple times during 2019. Despite this, the guys were also able to find the sheds to this buck, and hold out hope that he survived and will return at some point. Iowa's season opener doesn't arrive until the 1st of October, so when Jared Mills receives the invite to hunt Kentucky for the first time, he and Grant Noble load up the truck and head for his earliest whitetail hunt ever. and tags. We're ready to head to the farm. It's uh, September 5th, opening day here in Kentucky. Uh, really looking forward to this trip. Um, we are hunting with, we are hunting in Grant's old stomping grounds where we grew up and hunting with a good buddy of his named Keith. Excited to catch up with him and figure out the game plan for tonight and uh, more importantly excited to get in the woods. <laughs> Opening day, September 5th here in Kentucky. This is the earliest I've ever whitetail hunted. So it's kind of crazy it's here already, but we're walking in right now. We probably have a few hundred yards to walk in. Keith is up ahead of us. He's actually going past us. He's hunting a tree stand, and Grant and I are going to a blind. So uh, we'll be there in a few minutes and uh, kind of explain the setup once we get in. All right, Grant and I are settled in, and it's a warm one to kick the season off. As I mentioned, I've never hunted whitetails this early, so uh, it's a different experience for me, but it, it's good to be out. Um, in fact, this is my first out-of-state whitetail hunt in probably, I don't know, eight years or something like that. So it's been a while, but it's fun to be able to come to a place like this. and. Uh, Hunt so early compared to the October 1st opener we have up in Iowa. We are set up in a blind as you can tell and um, you know, normally that wouldn't be my first choice. But the wind forecast today is just all over the place. It's so light and variable. I've checked up my phone a bunch over the last eight or 10 hours and I've, I've seen every single direction forecasted this evening. So for that reason, we decided to bring the Ozonics and just kind of try to bottle up our scent inside this blind as best we could. This is a blind that Keith put out and brushed in really well. So hopefully the deer are used to it by now. Keith's actually kind of catty corner from us across the CRP field. Uh, he's hunting a stand over there, but he's got a good spot where his thermals are dropping down towards the creek. So uh, we're set up in the blind. Essentially, we're overlooking a big CRP field and we're on a, a tiny little tree line right here and there's beans back behind us. Um, so typical of an early season hunt, we're, we're hunting the, the bedding, the food pattern. Um, it's that time of year where they're shedding velvet, so I would venture to guess we're going to see some hardhorn and, and some still in velvet. I've never killed a velvet buck, so that'd be pretty cool, but just hoping to, to kill a good mature buck. Uh, to get the season started off on the right foot. 2020's been a been a rough year, as I'm sure it has for a lot of people, and it, it feels good just to get back in the woods. It's a there's no better therapy than that. So excited to excited to be out, excited to actually be hunting, and uh, hopefully Grant and I have a good night.
Just... That is not supposed to be... <laughs> That's not how it's supposed to work right there. I mean... That's the second and third deer we saw all night. We were just talking, the neighbor's been riding their four-wheeler or whatever for the last hour. Not very far away. It's just not supposed to work like that. <laughs> I'm excited to watch the footage and see. I think I made a good shot. He uh, did a nose dive right, right after impact, and I could see him bound away in the CRP. <sighs> Man, I just, I'm still in shock. <laughs> God, a big knife. Anyway, he can't be far. Yeah. He's, Let's go find he's him. right there. Sweet. Let's go. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate See it. Alright, hey, right there. He's two yards away from us. Where'd he go? 40 yards. Yes, sir. Look at that deer. First velvet buck. Well, as you can see, he did not go far. And uh, man, what a cool deer. He's got some cool character, cool little curve in his beam here. But the coolest thing is, this is my first buck in velvet. And I think we caught him probably on the final day that he was gonna be in velvet. Uh, just barely touching this is making it bleed and it's peeling off. And you see that right side already is starting to come out. Couldn't be happier, man. What a cool deer. And I still can't believe that it happened this way. This is not how it's supposed to happen. You don't come to a new state, new property, all this, and kill on the first night. And for that, I'm super grateful to both Grant and Keith. Um, he had a bunch of pictures of this deer, as well as a bunch of other deer. This is actually the same property uh, that Mike came and hunted, the Siri buck, last year. And the Siri buck is around again this year, just he's kind of moved off a little bit uh, across the road. Um, but nevertheless, super grateful to, to Keith for allowing us to come and hunt. This, this, is, this was a fun night and hopefully the start of a fun season. I'm uh, going to have fun celebrating this one tonight. Remy's going to come out. She gets to, gets to see the deer. She's going to be tickled to death to do that. So uh, that's what it's all about. You know, making memories, making new friends, just enjoying the whole aspect of the hunt. Man, I hope 2020 is a season of a lifetime. Should we take this deer home with us? Okay. Mm -hmm. Tagging his first velvet buck ever, Jared's season is off to an impressive start. Directly after leaving Kentucky, the guys venture cross country to the mountains of Montana. For the third season in a row, he drew an over-the-counter elk permit, and the fiery start continued blazing. Jared experiences great hunting, and after multiple close encounters, he finally gets his opportunity. In a matter of days, Jared checked off two firsts and sets the stage for what is hopefully going to be the best season ever. While Jared rides cloud nine and returns to Iowa to make a final push in preparation for opening day, 890 miles to the east of Maryland, team member Rye Ludwig is heading to his stand looking for redemption. What's going on guys? Rye Ludwig, Midwest Whitetail, over here on our uh, bow only property. Trying to get it done on Teddy, the big nine point. It's a deer I missed last Friday, September 11th, on our bow opener. Uh, back in here trying to get to him tonight. The uh, weather cooperated with pretty much the same wind as Friday when we got an opportunity at him, so I'm hoping he sticks true. So, as you can see, we're dealing with a little wind problem tonight, but it's supposed to die down here shortly. We have uh, the only green beans behind us that are around, so we're really trying to get after this deer because. 
I have a feeling he's going to go on his hiatus from October probably all the way through December, so he must have a fall range somewhere else, and we don't get pictures of him at all through the rut or anything. So um, hopefully get some good footage for you guys tonight, even though the wind's a little whippy, but here should still be moving. The temperatures are great. Let's we'll see what we can do. Okay, it's been a couple minutes. I had to calm down. There was deer all around me. I'm, I, I mean, my legs are shaking right now. I just, I'm pretty sure I just smoked the biggest buck of my life. I've been hunting this deer for three years. I missed him for the first time on Friday night. Oh my gosh. All right, I, I gotta make a phone call. I gotta get a hold of my dad. I gotta get called a cold cow and we'll give this deer a little while and we'll go down there and hopefully recover him here shortly. So stay tuned, guys. I'm pumped. I'm pumped. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh my. He's heavy, man. <laughs> That's a big deer. <laughs> Look at that thing. I, I'm honestly, I'm speechless right now. Look how heavy he is through his antlers. <laughs> like, he's he's wider up here than he is his base. Oh my gosh. Three years, man. I love them brows. Oh my gosh. The morning of September 19th is filled with celebration from Rye and company, but Rye isn't the only hunter hoping to have a story to tell. 890 miles to the west, the youth hunters of Iowa are preparing to head to the woods for opening day, a tradition our team takes pride in, cultivating the next generation of outdoorsmen is a responsibility we welcome with open arms. Give me some Dude, I'm so proud of you. Last night was an awesome night. Um, it's like we said, these two bucks are the first bucks for these kids. I mean, two beautiful, mature bucks. And I told Collins, we've been joking around, I, I told him that this is going to be the best season we have ever had, hands down. And uh, to shoot two mature bucks on opening night, get these kids uh, some success is just something that is going to go a long way. It's going to hit home on the memory book. and. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the season progress. Coming off of a phenomenal two buck season that saw him tag his biggest deer ever, Drake Lamb rolls into 2020 with high hopes for a repeat season. Much like the past few years, he plans to hunt exclusively on permission ground. With one full year of experience on each, two farms stand out. 
First is the Creek Bottom Farm, where Drake filled his bow tag the previous year. Preparation consists of adjusting stand locations, trimming new shooting lanes, and creating multiple mock scrapes with cuttybacks deployed to monitor them. Next up is the CRP farm, the same piece that he shot his giant late muzzleloader buck from the ground. He takes a very similar approach and completes the same task, preparing for the upcoming year. Finally is the newest addition to the Permission Arsenal, one he dubs the River Farm. Drake believes this piece holds loads of potential and his summer is spent establishing a micro turnout plot and deploying another cutting link system. Overall, Drake's summer inventory on the permission pieces is slow, but past history shows that as the calendar nears November, the hit list grows in size. I spent the vast majority of my 2019 season bouncing around on different pieces of Iowa public land, and though I never filled a tag, encounters were plentiful and many lessons were learned. Despite the fun times, my off-season was spent doing my best to secure access to private land. By the end of the summer, two pieces of property enter my story. One is a farm with beautiful terrain that I and a close friend choose to lease together. Instantly, multiple great bucks show up on trail camera, and in the process, I got one of the coolest videos I've ever captured. The top buck on the farm, Millie, in the middle of shedding his velvet. Second was a permission piece I secured by exchanging farm work for Lee Abraham. This piece of ground too holds a lot of promise. By the end of the summer, two bucks climbed to the top of the target list, one called the brow buck and the other a tall time 10 pointer. Now late September, the season opener is less than a week away and my story on the permission farm has taken an extremely interesting turn. By late September, most if not all bucks in Iowa have typically shed their velvet, beginning to establish their fall ranges. Something I never dreamed of is occurring however. My top target, the Tall Tine 10, is still sporting a full rack worth of fuzz. With an incoming cold front barreling towards Iowa on opening day, I decide to get aggressive, taking advantage of a pop-up rainstorm hitting the permission farm. So, well, we've got our other stands right across the food plot. But October 1st, we got a northwest wind, and um, unfortunately, it didn't set up well for that stand. But we've got our top deer showing up in daylight in this food plot. And so we came in here on this rainy day. Luckily, you know, it's kind of great timing. There's no other way to put it. So this tree is going to give us a 30 yard shot and scrape by and we're getting that deer. We're getting it in the two places on this side and uh, just hope it pays off. I mean, I'm, I mean, my legs are shaking right now. I just, I'm pretty sure I just smoked the biggest buck of my life. And we came back to this food plot we put in last weekend and got a stand hung finally after a little bit of trials and tribulations in this big cherry tree in the fence line. This, I'm um, just really looking forward to this spot. That stand's really sweet. Got good cover up there and can shoot across both ways. Cuddy Link is deployed. Uh, Clover's mowed. Uh, hay bale blind is all set up, ready to go. Tree stand hung. Uh, it's been a productive day. Now it's just time to wait, count down the days till the October 1st opener. Uh, I can't wait to get back in the tree. Man, what a cool way to start off the season, just hoping to even see this deer. So hopefully it works out and we don't have to chase November. I'm not too worried about, you know, not having any deer on these farms. I think with time and as the rut approaches, these deer will definitely move into these farms. So looking forward to hunting these farms. With the summer months now behind us and a few successful hunts to drive our expectations, we look ahead to opening day. Plenty of work remains in the patterning process and these last few days are priceless. Every camera card pull is met with high anticipation as we attempt to find back the bucks we will be hunting this fall. With a major cold front on the horizon, we can't help but dream of what's to come. The beginning of the journey is now here. We are finally strapped in, committed to the ride we affectionately call Chasing November 